here tonight. Amen. There are times in scriptures when very specifically the Father tells us if this is a good thing or if it is not a good thing. Uh, for example, one example, it is not good that the soul be without knowledge. That's one very specific thing that's spelled out. There are also those things that are good. The scripture says it is good to give thanks unto the Lord. And again, it's also good to be zealously affected in a good thing. So I wanted to consider one of the, one of the times that the Father himself tells us that it is a good thing that we can consider of these things tonight. You want to perk up your ears when you hear that. It is a good thing that... We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 9 for this consideration tonight. I'm just going to lift a phrase out of this verse. The phrase says, For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Amen. This is a good thing. And it addresses the heart of man. So why is it a good thing that the heart of all the parts of our being, that the heart be established with grace? Well, first of all, the scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if, if you have a stable heart, then you'll have a stable man. If you have a wavering heart, a doubting heart, then you'll have a wavering man. Also, you think of a, of a hardened heart, and you have a stiff-necked people. But in the parable that Jesus told, if you have a, an honest and a good heart, that's the good ground that he spoke about, receiving the word and then bearing forth much fruit. So it's a good thing that our hearts be established. The scriptures speak a lot about the heart. And I just wanted to remind us of several things that the heart is connected to. It says, from the heart flow forth all the issues of life. So it's a good thing that your heart be established. We are to love the Lord with all of our heart. But no one can do this with a heart that is not established. We're exhorted to let our heart be perfect with the Lord. That's speaking of this established heart. And again, we're told that only the pure in heart can ascend to the hill of the Lord, and only those who are pure in heart shall see God. It's a good thing that our hearts be established. We want to be stable and unmovable in our heart, from our very, the very core of our being. We want to be unmovable, rooted and grounded now, this is where the Lord works. The Lord works in the heart of a man, first of all, to change that man, and then to bring forth his purpose in the rest of the earth. He uses these established hearts as his vessels to carry out his work. Amen. But he will only use those vessels that are worthy of his work, those vessels that are in agreement with him. And this speaks of this established heart. Now, when we think of something that's established, we may think of something that is joined firmly to a foundation, something that is fixed to a sure foundation. It's proven, something that has been proven to stand against the winds of adversity. Whenever we think of a structure here in the earth, we might think of something that's established that maybe it's been hardened over the process of time, set, it's set in stone or something of that sort. But when you think of an established heart, established with the Lord, you think of a tender and a sensitive heart that's able to be molded, one that's experienced walking with the Lord, and so it's been molded to, to show forth His image more and more. An established heart, we can say, is a faithful heart or a strong heart, a heart that's trusting, not fearful, but assured before Him in, in this grace. Um, Thinking of being proven, something that's established is something that's been proven. Um, the scriptures speak about God trying the heart and proving the heart of man. And this includes this process of becoming established. This is the Lord's work. He's proving the heart so that it can be established by his grace. Now, proving is often the work of a teacher. You think of this, grace teaches us. So it fits. It fits this um, shadow here, this this uh, illusion here. Grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Those things that are unstable, 
those things that would toss us or move us. Grace teaches us not even to have an affection for those things, but it also teaches us to live soberly and righteously and godly. You think of establishment. You think of firm and unmovable with that language there. It teaches us to take hold of he who changes not. He who is the same yesterday, today, and forever so that we can have that same stability. A good teacher, grace, it will give the things that are necessary and it will make them easy to take hold of. This is what grace is doing. Then, oftentimes, there comes a test. The teacher will give the student a test to see how well he can use the things that he's been given. This is the process of proving or becoming established by grace. It is good that our hearts be established with grace. We can say by grace or together with grace. We can say it's good that the heart be established as a result of the work of grace in the heart of the believer. Now, looking at the previous part of this verse, I was considering this um, in preparation for this introduction. He says, Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is good, it a good thing that the heart be established with grace. So I thought, if you consider the, the beginning of that verse, of being moved by these doctrines, it might be a, uh, an assumption that it would be the heart be established with truth. Uh-huh, yeah. But it's grace. Mm-hmm. Then I remembered that these things are joined in That's the right. kingdom. Amen. It says that grace and truth came by Jesus yeah. Christ. And He is the one, the only begotten of the Father. He, was, he is full of grace and truth. So when you think of these things, how can any of us have a heart that's established without grace? How can we take hold of the truth if we didn't have grace, if we have a strong heart in establishing? So grace enables us to take hold of the truth and then to be able to use that truth to profit the soul, to nourish ourselves, then to minister to the brethren and to speak for the Lord himself. So we see here that in Christ, we have all things needful for life and for godliness, and this grace that will establish our hearts. We're going to open with a word of prayer this evening, and we'll go on to some singing with Sister June.